this is like this is like this and uh, it's like this and like that and like this and my no <laughs> yes yes y'all <laughs> i think somebody gonna uh, let us know <laughs> they gonna let us know we back wait a minute you said i wasn't saying it right it's yeah. like this is like that and like this and uh, i'm not doing it right yeah you're doing it right <laughs> you said i wasn't doing it right Get past that. Construction's on, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we was on. Ooh, we back, y'all. We back, we back, we back. Right. We back. We back. We back, we back, we back. Okay. So, technically, even though this video is being done on the same day, it's not the same video. <laughs> it's a different video. So we really not on LST time. That don't count. No, it don't count. No. It don't count. I don't mind that we started it off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't yeah. mind. I don't mind. So you think uh, Pastor Lee Farmer is uh, watching us? Reverend Lee? Reverend Lee? That's his new name. <laughs> Gave him a new name. <laughs> Reverend Lee. Reverend Lee. That's Paul. his new name. Reverend Lee. <laughs> he gonna get mad at you. You so why said it? <laughs> but he gonna get mad at you. <laughs> Reverend Lee. <laughs> hey Rev. <laughs> oh boy. That's going to be his new name, Reverend Lee. Yeah. <laughs> General Post Office, Box 50. <laughs> Reverend Lee Farmer. New York, New York. A lot of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about, but that's okay. <laughs> Reverend Ike. <laughs> Man, he going to be mad. <laughs> oh, boy. Reverend Lee, y'all. That's Reverend Lee. <laughs> Oh my goodness, welcome back y'all, welcome back, welcome back. So glad y'all back. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you been calling him Prophet Lee? Prophet. Y'all getting hot. <laughs> okay, let me look you up a little bit. Oh boy, it's hot in here. <laughs> Got me laughing like this. All right y'all. Uh, Susie says, when we open the butter, do I put it in the fridge on the counter? It goes right in the refrigerator. If you open a canning jar of something you've canned, anything that you open off that shelf, if you've pressure canned it or water bath canned it, when you open it, if you don't use all of it, that jar goes in the refrigerator, okay? Because remember, it's food preservation. So as long as it's in that jar and it's sealed, it's preserved. But when you open it, it's no longer in that mode of being preserved for long-term storage. So it can't stay on the counter. It's got to go in the refrigerator. Okay? Lashonda's on the road, too. On the road again. Lashonda's rolling? Just can't wait to get on the road again. Oh, man. The life I love is being with family and my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. Okay, 14 miles. Okay. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. Okay. That's another thing. Uh, Twinkie burger. That's another thing we can talk about, like food that you really like, enjoy, you can store. Mm -hmm. A lot of people forget <laughs> about pancake mix. Oh man. Making pancakes and having your own syrup. Yeah. You know, I love pancakes. You sure do. <laughs> if you, you can do. get some pancake mix and put it in mylar bags and store it up or however you do it, a full grade bucket, I'm telling you. Y'all see why? That's a comfort food. I keep food him right on now. a certain diet. Y'all see why? And then you put some of that butter on See there? what I'm saying? See oh, what I'm man. saying? What this about, is why I have to do what I do. What about honey? 
put that honey on top of that pancake. See what I'm saying? And just imagine if things is getting really weird around the world where you know you got these these uh, uh, situations where the storage containers are out at sea and everything just get to the point where you know it's hard to get food. Mm -hmm. Early in the morning. As I go to, in, into uh, Mrs. H's uh, situation where she stored up a lot of uh, jam. You did, you did what now? I, I went into your storage pantry uh, and I got one of those small jars. What? Yeah. Pineapple jam. What? I, I was the one that got it. Oh my God! It was me on my pancakes and you were asleep. And what? I, I took advantage of the situation. I was opportunist. I got that pancake. Oh my God, baby, really? And it was, it was golden brown. Put some butter on top of that pancake. Got that pineapple jam. And I ate that two big pancakes. Because he was like, what happened to my pineapple jam? I was like, well, you're going to have to figure that one out on your own. I just had to confess to doing it, you know, in front of the super subs, you know. And I did it. I'm the one who did it. Yeah, it was me. So, put it out there. I need to pray for a minute, hold on. I need to, give me a second. I need to have prayer, okay? Cause I need help right now. I need to pray one moment, one moment. Yeah. So I'm gonna buy you okay. some more pineapples so okay. we can start over again. Okay. But it was me who did that. It was me. He said the pineapple chain. Yeah. We all know how I feel about the pineapple chain. Okay. Yeah. And pancakes. It's great. See, this is why we have to pray. This is why we have to pray. We have to talk. We have to pray. We have to pray, pray. Folks, go to your stash. Yeah. I did. We're going to continue this conversation with the time. Okay. Let's just let you know, you know. All y'all like that comfort food? Y'all be slipping on them pancakes now. Pancakes is good. <laughs> Not while he driving. <laughs> Not while he driving. Oh, well, she's mad. She's upset, y'all. Okay. I got to forget about that book. All right, y'all. Where were we? We were talking about... We were talking about readying ourselves, right? Yeah. Oh, he is. We were talking about readying ourselves. Okay. I need the Holy Ghost right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> hey, Felicia's box. Okay, y'all. So, readying yourselves. I forgot what we was even talking about. I forgot what we was even talking about. This man that threw me for a loop right now. I had in my head what I was fixing to say. I done forgot it all. I done forgot it all. Hey, y'all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Leslie. Yes. All right, y'all, we back. <laughs> we back. Confession is good for the soul, they say. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, not radiate. <laughs> the title of the video. <laughs> <laughs> it's the title of the video. Yeah. Woo. Ready in yourself. Mm -hmm. We need to pray just to make it today, right? Okay. Infl insecticide. Sandy, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about in the garden. Now, um, I don't know if you saw another a, a, a recent live that we did where we talked about um, our gardens and the fact that we don't use 
insecticides in our garden, pesticides in our garden. Even though we do have them, we do have organic means of taking care of our garden. It's not that there's anything wrong with using those, okay? It's not. But, like I said before, like Mr. H said before, we just can't seem to make ourselves do it. We have them. But we just can't seem to make ourselves do it. If you have a small garden and you want to use something like um, neem oil, BT, spinosad, and I would even advise using them, alternate the use because if you just constantly use one, at some point, they're gonna develop an immunity to that. So I would even say, if you use spinosad this week, well maybe two weeks later, you probably wanna use neem oil. I would say, kind of break it up that way and not just use the exact same thing because they may very well develop a resistance to that, okay? Now, um, for us, our garden size, we plant a extra of what we need because we know that we're going to have a problem with pests coming in, taking out some of our crops. We know this already. So, and because we don't spray, we just go ahead. We know that they're going to take out some of our tomatoes. Yeah. We know that they're going to decimate our squash. Man. We know this. Yeah. So we just plant extra. If you don't have the space to plant extra, then by all means, use an organic pesticide. Don't just let them take them out. Also, also uh, they have a, a late squash that you can plant when the squash bugs are dying out. Yeah, all of it really. If you have a long growing season, you can start them in July, August, right? Yeah. Because, please tell me we're not breaking up again. We still here? We still home? Okay. Now, Heaton Homestead said that you can plant uh, marigolds, daffodils. Those things help too. They really do. So you can actually plant flowers and even onions help in a lot of cases as well. Okay, Azania, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so now you can use things of that nature and it's probably a lot of other things. Now when it comes to fertilizers, we do not use synthetic fertilizers in our garden. Not at all. No, we don't go and buy 10-10-10s <clears throat> and 5 5 5s and 1-1-1s and 5 5 5 5s Just kidding. But no, we don't do that. We use um, bone meal, feather meal. Those are our two top fertilizers right there. Or that 511, which is that fish emotion. We use that if we have to. Because that would be... The feather meal that we use is a nitrogen source. It is a fertilizer, right? And we normally would put that in the planting hole, right along with our bone meal, right along with our azomite. That goes in the hole. And then we plant our plant. And typically we don't ever have to fertilize again after that. We really don't. We don't ever fertilize again after that. We, we haven't found a need to do that. But if you do need to add a nitrogen source, then you can always go and get yourself some fish emulsion, put it in a watering can, and you can use that. Yes, ma'am, with the art of uh, today, oh, absolutely. Absolutely, we take our chicken manure, we harvest it out of, thank you, Candy, thank you so much. We harvest it, Nova Scotia. In the house, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, Canada. Wow, I think rabbit manure is awesome. If you got your hands on some rabbit manure, y'all use it. 
that's some excellent fertilizer too. But we definitely take, we harvest our chicken manure. Yes, sir. One mile. We harvest our chicken manure every spring. We go in and we shovel the entire chicken house out. We've done a video on that before. And we put it in with our compost. We put it in a little compost pile area. And we will use that to spread over the garden. Like our watermelon patch that we just tilled up and created. We're gonna take a lot of that and we're gonna put that over our watermelon patch area. And that is going to be the fertilizer that we put down over the area. But then when it comes time to use any other fertilizers for the whole planting, then we will actually use azomite and um, probably, yeah, this is it. Okay, we'll probably be using um, the azomite, the feather mill, and if we deem it necessary, we may even add a little bit of feather mill, no, bone mill in the hole, but feather mill as well if we feel that it's necessary. Now, you all, if you got rabbit manure, uh, some people even use their goat poop, because it's like a pellet. <laughs> but you can use what you have. A lot of people use rabbit manure, chicken manure, horse manure, cow manure. Please let that stuff break down. It would take some time. Don't just put raw uh, chicken manure. That stuff needs to be composted, okay? You can burn the roots up. It will burn up your crops if you put that raw stuff in your garden. It needs to have time. Oops. It needs to have time to cook, you all. It needs to have time to break down. Okay. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you so much. Britt O.W. said that sheep manure is also a cold manure, meaning that it will not burn your crops. Thank you, Karen B. without a gardener says that she plants when we uh, plant and when Lady Lead plants. Okay. What do you mean why you can't put DE on chickens? I don't understand that question. DE. Diatomaceous earth. What do you mean, why you can't put it on them? Because I sprinkle it down in their chicken house on the ground. I sprinkle it down, it helps keep mites away. It helps keep um, ants at bay. You know, I'll sprinkle it over the top, right? I don't like mix it in or nothing like that because one thing I'll tell you, our chicken house is open to the ground. And all we do is add a mulch hay to the ground and worms come up. They do, they come up. And when we shoveling out the chicken house, it's loaded with worms. I'm surprised the chickens don't be the found all, but it's loaded with worms. But when we put down the bedding, I like to cover the top of the bedding. It won't last forever in there, but I just like to put the DE over the bedding and it takes away any mites or any other pests that could be in there and cause irritation to our chickens. So I'll make sure to put that down, even ants, okay? Yes, so that's the way I do that. Thank y'all so much for your super chats. Thank y'all so much. Okay, yeah, the, DD, the DE is good in the coop. Okay, so we do the deep litter method, and that's exactly what we do. Like I said, when I put that fresh uh, mulch hay down for them, I'm always putting diatomaceous earth over that hay. Because sometimes that hay, you know, we get our hay from a, a guy, we know where we're getting it from, we know he's not spraying it with any chemical, we know what he's doing to it, right? 
but because it's old it gets moldy he doesn't use it for feed the hay that we buy we don't use it for you know he doesn't use that for feed it's, it's literally for mulching and bedding and so as it sits out it gets molded it gets pests come up in it and all kind of things will come up in it ants everything so as we're taking that hay down even in our goat pen even in our turkey pen yeah. we'll take that and we will put uh, DE over that and that will help keep that under control and we've never had a problem thus far yeah and it's food grade okay we buy food grade diatomaceous earth all right okay there are, are two different types of garden lime that you can use I would say research it and see what your you what your specific need is for that garden lime okay whatever your specific need is then you'll know which garden lime you need to buy okay but don't just go don't just go and get garden lime because they do have well where we get ours from which is Seven Springs Farm. They have two different kinds, but you need to know what you're using it for, okay? Where did my comments go? They're still there. Oh, okay. All right, you all. So, when it comes to that, use food grade diatomaceous earth, okay? Now, even in our duck pen, oh, we yeah. use it in our ducks too. We do. Because sometimes we'll notice in that hay, like when we put the bedding down in our goat pen, you'll know on goats, like right away, if there's a mite issue. Because they'll start, um, their legs will get irritated. They'll start losing hair around their legs and all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be able, you'll know right away if there's a mite issue, right? So, if there's a mite issue, this, this is the reason why we put the diatomaceous earth down. Because as soon as we put it down, we'll notice their legs will start growing hair again. They won't have any problems and all of that. So, we know that there's going to be some type of a pest in that hay, in the mulch hay. Yeah. So, we do that to take care of them. Hey, Sheila. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Now... you all any questions before we continue Alicia you have the standard diatomaceous earth and then you have a food grade because you can use the food grade even in the feed of your animals it's good to help with worms that could be in their stomach right like for chickens dogs cat you don't put a lot in there but dogs and cats you can sprinkle a little bit over their food and it's it helps them with any kind of worm or anything that could be in their stomach so that's good and some some people actually put diatomaceous earth in their food as well I don't but some people do okay um lasagna Annetta Ford is asking how do you give a super chat would you explain how to do that? It should be a button. Okay. All right, y'all. So, now we were talking about readying yourselves. And, and in the previous video, so many people were giving so much advice on how you can store food. Wormwood is an herb. I am growing wormwood, sweet wormwood, this season. Okay? But you all, a little goes a long way, Violet. That's right. So you all, we were just putting food, right? We were talking, and people were giving so much good advice about how you can 
use mylar bags, five gallon buckets for rice, for beans, for oats. And even I, we even shared with you where we get our bulk foods from, which is Azure Standard, okay? Now, getting your seat, your foods in bulk is less expensive, number one. Instead of trying to go and buy a lot of little one pound bags, buying it in bulk is gonna be more cost effective in the long run. Okay? And then you get more now, and more. I mean, you get so much more for your money. Yeah, you do. You get so much more for your money. Okay, y'all. Did we stall out? I think we're back. Are we back? I think we'll be coming out of it here in just a second. Because I see it's pretty good on one screen. Okay, good. Good. It says buff. They say that we're buffering. Hold on a second. Are we still buffering? We're good now? Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. All right, you all. So now. You're saying Azure, Azure standards. Azure standard. I wouldn't tell y'all about Azure if we did not love shopping with Azure, okay? Now, Mr. H was telling you about some of the things that we buy from Azure. And honey, we buy it in a five gallon bucket. Yes. And that is a cost. But when you add up the cost of buying the little containers of honey from the supermarket every time you run out, that's if you use honey. For us, that's our number one sweetener is honey for us, yeah. okay? Yeah, so, they charge like $25 for a little ditty bar. Yeah, if it's organic, yeah, they charge a lot. Yeah. And we do spend, I think, 170 something or something, 180 something on the honey. But that honey lasted us for like 14 months. Yeah. It lasted us for 14 months. Over a year it lasted us. Yeah. And not to mention it was organic and it was good. It was okay? Good. Now, you all, Azure, if you like um, pinto beans and things like that, rice, they have all of it. You can even buy fresh produce. Yeah. You all know Azure Standard. Azania, will you put that link down? Or Halal Family Homestead, one of the beautiful moderators. We have a link for our channel for Azure Standard. You spell it AZ. Yeah, they got it up there. They got it. Yeah, they work fast. Man, that was cool. Yeah, they work fast. We got the crew. Man. They know what they be doing. They be on top of things. <laughs> but you all, they even have produce. Because you remember last year when we had that issue with all of our potatoes. We planted so many potatoes and the ants ate them all. Oh, and I went right online to Azure. I think we're breaking up. But I went online to Azure, to Azure and I ordered my Yukon Gold potatoes because that does I was not going to go without our potatoes. So I had some that we ate fresh and the rest I canned, right? And that was really all I needed was just that box right there. You're going to love it, Princess Pamela's World. You're going to love that. You do have to go and pick it up or you can have it shipped to your home if you want to. It's going to cost you more money, but you can do that. But, yeah, but we've been shopping with Azure for a long time. Like, they're not new to us. We've been using them for a long, long time, and we've never been disappointed. And if I've ever had a problem, they didn't have a problem with correcting it right away, okay? So, I really enjoy them, okay? Damn. Yes. Yeah, it's going to cost you now. If they got to bring this to your house. Oh, it's going to cost you. But it depends on where you are, I think, too. 
think, if I'm not mistaken, you still have to be like somewhere around where they deliver in order for that to be shit. I don't know. You just really have to check because they do give you the option now whether you want it to ship to your house. At least on our site it does. Whether you want it to ship to your house or if you want to do the drop pickup, right? Okay. Mighty Living is in the house. Mighty Living. Man. All right. Brit O.W., I drive 1.5 hours to do Azure, and it's worth it. Amen to that. I know. And if you live in an area where you might think, oops, a lot of people use Azure, and you want to sign up to be a representative for Azure in order to get them to come to your area directly, you can do that. Yeah. You can do that. You can sign up, and you would. it's on volunteer basis, but you can volunteer and if they approve the area that you're in, then they'll bring it to your area so you don't have to drive an hour and a half, two hours away, right? You can be that representative for as you're in your area, okay? That's a great that. idea. Yeah. Okay, so now... Okay. We starting to look alike. <laughs> Damn, say we starting to look alike. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second time somebody didn't say it then. I don't look like a man, do I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But you all, hi, everybody. So now, that is, that is one way that you can get your bulk goods, okay? If you have like a farmer's market, in your area and this is just in case you can't grow everything this is just just in case you cannot grow everything then don't be ashamed to go to the farmers market and get what you need yeah. so if you got if you need carrots and you know you struggle with growing carrots still try to grow them but if you can go to the farmers market there's a farmers market in uh, Decatur Georgia that we would we love to go to sometimes right and they have sometimes a 50 pound bag of carrots yeah and if i'm not successful in growing carrots there's no shame in my game to stand in that line with a 50 pound bag of carrots because i'm still we're gonna get carrots okay yeah. we're gonna get our carrots so <clears throat> if i can't grow 50 pounds you're from decatur yeah see if i can't grow 50 pounds I'm going to go get my 50 pounds for the year and we'll have some to eat fresh and I'll have some to can because I put carrots in all of my soups and stuff. You know, I use the carrots, so I have to get the 50 pounds for the year. Decap Farmer's Market. That's right. That's where we go. That's, that's the place that's where we go. Yeah. And that's where we get our 50 pounds of carrots. Now, if you are shopping with Azure, Azure also will ship you 50 pounds of carrots. Yeah, they will. Yeah. They'll ship you the produce, bell pepper. Some things they'll tell you if it'll spoil en route, depending on where your location is. If you're too, too far away from where they ship it from, they'll let you know that it, it will spoil en route. So but most things can make it. So we'll get it from there or we're going to go to the farmer's market and get what we need. Okay? So now, if I don't get to buy my carrots, if I don't get a chance to grow them, because I'm, I'm, I'm growing them again this year. I'm growing them again this year. I'm looking forward to doing it as a matter, as a matter of fact. You know, so growing them my goal is to get 50 pounds of carrots. That's how many carrots that we use in a year's time and still have some left, right? To get us to make a few months until the next growing season starts. Okay, we're back. Thank you, Nikki B. That's the way we grow food. 
based upon what we need for the year and then from season to season. So let's say I won't be able to grow and get fresh carrots again until April of 2022. Well, I need to have grown or canned enough carrots last year to get me through to April of 2022 and it's time for me to grow some more or buy some more, right? That's the way that I do it because I don't want us to Joy Look, put them out there Put their name out there Put them on blast <laughs> so we'll know Put them on blast so we'll know on blast so we'll know y'all already know I, I we love our subscribers right you know anything about us we don't we are a no nonsense type of people so we ain't got time for that foolishness all right all right all right <laughs> everybody ain't gonna be felicia today okay bye all right all right thank you so much felicia <laughs> i wasn't talking to you though <laughs> You talking about you was talking about the other Felicia? I was talking about I was talking about somebody else. You talking about yeah the, the Felicia from earlier? I'm talking about the ones who are like what they call them uh, trolls and stuff. Oh yeah, them trolls. Them Felicias. Oh, yeah. All trolls are Felicias. Okay, yeah. so when you see Felicia in the house, okay, tell, tell Felicia to exit left. Bye, Felicia. Okay. See. All right now, <laughs> but not Felicia's box. We ain't talking about that. Uh, <laughs> she a good place. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, that was right on cue. Look at you <laughs> commenting right with you. Good look, we thinking alike. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. So now, <laughs> you got what I was saying. <laughs> but anyway, you all, that's what we have to do. We try to. I try to plan it in my mind for a year ahead. How much do I want to grow? You know, because I know I'm going to have to can it up. And I know it's got to last us a year. I know it do, right? So I try to grow accordingly. And when I can't grow it successfully, then I go get it. Hopefully I can go get it, right? So now, that's the way that we do this. Okay, and even when it comes to like meats, if you don't raise your own meat and stuff, y'all, <laughs> whack a troll. I like that. <laughs> whack a troll. <laughs> I had a conversation with somebody the other day about them. They were gonna host, you know, they were suggesting that they should start a YouTube channel just about trolls. Yeah. And the whole thing was to just go after trolls mm -hmm. and I said what would you say and we was talking it was funny they said dear troll your mama's so fat she on both sides of the family <laughs> <Wow. laughs> mm. I'm like now if somebody were to start a YouTube channel just to go after trolls, I said they would make millions. They would probably, well, it's I don't say millions, it's but a lot of trolls they right would now. make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just to go after trolls all the time. Yeah. You know, and I said, yeah, I, I like that. Yeah. I do like that. They would never have to show their face. They would just tell, just tell that, uh, <laughs> tell those little jokes and if you're a person who's good at telling jokes and things like that it would be hilarious to do something like that so i would actually like to see stuff like that yeah but anyway you all roll a troll <laughs> yeah that's what it would be um grand grand solar minimum solutions trolling the trolls <laughs> <laughs> trolling the trolls i'm the subscriber i would be subscriber number one okay <laughs> Oh, most of them are okay. Patrol, patrol, yep. Patrol, patrol. Oh, 
That's another I like that. Troll Patrol. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, boy. But anyway, you all. Anyway, you all. That's the way that we would do that. Now, growing meat. Okay. Uh, raising meat for your own. Raising your own meat for canning and putting it away <coughs> is wonderful. If you can't buy the best that you can afford and put some in your freezer for eating, but can as much as you can. Yeah. All right. Always try to can as much extra as you can right and remember us talking about if you get food benefits and they're giving you extra now is a great time to buy those extra things so that you can have more food to can and put away for a tough time okay all right y'all so now is there anything else that we forgot to talk about any Anything else that we forgot to mention? Any questions that you all have? Darla says somebody make Troll Patrol happen. Oh. <laughs> somebody said, she said, make it happen. I'm pretty sure they are. Because protecting territory. Because there's a lot of trolls out there. Somebody gonna step up. Camping. Let me see here. Water. Water, water, water. Yes. Now look, y'all. When it comes to water, we did talk about in that previous video about the importance of having one gallon of water per person per day, okay? And we also talked about having water that is not for drinking, but for cleaning purposes as well, right? Now, I know some of you will say, I don't have a lot of room I understand that. My solution for water may not be your solution, okay? So whatever your solution for water is, whatever you can do. Because see, I know people who got 5,000 gallon tanks. That's a lot of water. It's a lot of water that runs, that uh, works with a gutter system. Okay. Let rainwater just come down. Yes, in food grade containers too. All right, not just anything. They're food grade containers. Okay. So, if you can buy a tank that size, they they do cost some money. If you can afford a tank that size, and you can have that set up on a gutter system off your home, if you got the space off of a outbuilding if you have a homestead i say do that i don't think there's any such thing as having too much water that's the life fluid right yeah, yeah. that's the life fluid water mm -hmm. if all you can do is if you can do a 55 gallon drum then you can do a 55 gallon drum if your source has to be a swimming pool because I know some people who uses a swimming pool for water and they just cover it to keep out dirt, debris, leaves, all of that. And yours may be five gallon containers. Maybe that's all you can do. Some people buy the five gallon containers and have those stored somewhere. Some people don't have room for five gallon containers. Some people just have room for one gallon containers. And if that's all you have, 
then or if that's all the space you have you have to do what works for your space okay yeah. you have to do what works for your space now when it comes to we talked about the food we talked about the water in the previous video we talked about ways to heat your food okay this is like a part two for everybody who's just just now coming over to this video the other one cut out on us so we had to start it all over again yeah so this is like a part two to that you might want to get open but this is um the second part to that if you have an attic we have an attic i wouldn't put nothing in our attic i'm telling you our house is so old it's old and old i wouldn't put nothing in that attic unless somebody came up there and cleaned that out and, and uh put some sheet rock or something it's got to look decent if i'm gonna go i ain't going up in that attic <laughs> I ain't going. Mr. H go up there when we have issues and stuff. He crawl on up there. He ain't got no problem doing it. But your girl ain't going up in there. Hey. Okay? Alright. So, uh-uh. I'm just saying not me. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Not me. But if y'all got to... Um, thank you, Nikki B. Thank you so much. Thank y'all so much. Alicia's box. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Thank you. I know I'm missing a lot. I know I'm missing a lot. Adam T. Wow. Thank you so much. Oh, that's awesome. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Wow. Thank y'all so much. So, yes, y'all. If you have crawl spaces, I'm going to tell y'all the truth. This is the time right now. I don't care wherever you can pack a canning jar. Wherever you can pack some water, you need to pack it there, all right? It doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter where. Find the space. Find space, okay? Be, be creative. Be creative. Do something. Because you're going to wish you had you're gonna it. going to wish, oh, yes. If you never had it before. You, and then that's when you're going to be like, oh, I could have did this. I could have put it here. Right. So... I guess while we're ahead of time, in the clear, when everything is still up and going, because yes. we don't know where things could go, right? it's always good to have something already stashed away. That's right. Because if you don't have nothing stashed away and things go crazy, then you can, then that's when all the ideas will come. Yeah, that's when, I'm gonna tell y'all something. When we know exactly where we were, when we got the, alert that there was gonna it was announced that there was a global pandemic we know exactly where we were we were at the farmer's market when we went in there was hardly nobody there when it was time to go we were literally back to back there were thousands thousands of people in that market to where we could not even we we were walking like taking inch steps trying to get out oh, it was super crowded it was so many people I'm like we gotta get out of here it was so many people and they were grabbing stuff they were going crazy yeah people they just were snatching just snatching stuff they really weren't even looking at prices they just was like, if there was some strawberries, they just was grabbing, just grabbing. They People were just frantically grabbing food. Yeah. And I'm like, we got to go. We got to yeah. get out of here. And we, it took us forever just to get to the checkout line from where we oh, were. Man. It was so many people there. Yeah. So if you can find a place to put something, put it there. If you live in your own place, but maybe mama live 
a few miles away, <clears throat> take it to mama house if mama got some extra space. If you got family that think like you now, you gotta yeah. be like-minded. Yeah, yeah. Don't take your stuff somewhere and you go back and they didn't ate it all because they didn't feel like cooking. Mm -hmm. All right? Like-minded, people who understand. If they got some extra space and they can share some with you, please put it where you can put it. Store it where you can store it, okay? If you got some extra closets and you got a ton of clothes, maybe you can make some room. If you got, you know, I love shoes. Y'all, look, I'm on the farm, y'all. I know, but your girl loves shoes, okay? So when it comes to, we clean up pretty good. Y'all probably don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> but we clean up pretty good, okay? <laughs> and I love shoes, but shoes are food and shoes gotta move, okay? They gotta go. I love my shoes, but they gotta go. But I don't even buy shoes like that no more, do <laughs> No. I don't. But I got shoes I've had a long time and they look brand new. I got shoes I've had for 10 years and they look like I just pulled a tag off of them because I love my shoes. I take care of my shoes. So you all, if I have to move the shoes and stack the shoes, and they still in boxes too. I'm, I'm the box person with the shoes. So if I gotta stack my boxes up, if that's what I gotta do to make space for my cannon jars, my water, my whatever, then that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I can't eat my shoes. If something happened, I can't eat them. I'll be using them things for firewood or something. If it came to it. I can't eat the shoes, but the food and the water, that's, that's urgent. Okay? Wait a minute. What did Miss C say? Miss C was giving some advice, but I missed it. That's another thing I love about our community is that y'all, I keep telling y'all, it's some knowledgeable folks in this chat right here. So please put your questions in. There is no such thing as a dumb question. There's no such thing as a dumb question when it comes to you trying to survive what we see coming. There, please post your question because trust me, there's somebody else who want to know the answer and there's somebody who can give it as well so please put it out there so we'll know <clears throat> yeah please put it out there i love that i love when people start having questions they be i love that because now you finna take some information we sharing some information y'all i love it i love it that's good that's, that's good great. that's what i'm talking that's about that's great you see everybody get on the same level of knowing a lot of things, mm -hmm. there's more knowledge we can spread to other people. Other people, so that's we, right. So we will be a big group of people helping each other. Yes. In this, in this hour that we need to, you know, get ready. Yes. That's the name of the video. That's right, ready in yourselves. Ready in yourselves. Get ready, that's right. Okay, now, somebody asked a question about where is it? Where is it? I didn't want to lose it. <sighs> Darn. Oh man, come on. Let me find it. Let me find it. Okay, so I'm going to have to paraphrase because I can't find the question. Okay, go ahead and paraphrase. And hopefully they'll post it, you know, again. Okay, so Travel Nurse Prepper says she has a question about cornmeal. So put your question out there so people so, so you can get an answer. But somebody said something about what to do in a grid down, grid down situation. I was looking for that because I wanted to read that question. And now I've lost it. I've lost it. Okay, well. In. All right, I lost it. I 
also like in a grid down situation with anything. You you would want to make sure that you have like basic things. Uh, water, food, way to cook food. Um, yes, you do. You know, yeah. Those things so. Okay. Okay, unconventional forager says I live on a property that doesn't belong to me. This is my second time. The the first owner sold and I had to leave. Should I continue to can? My things are in storage. Oh yeah. 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 You don't stop you don't stop canning. Because what you canning right now is in the house where you, it's gonna be where you are. Don't stop canning. Whatever you do, don't stop canning. And if you can get that uh, yeah. food to the storage, and you can get it, you know, like in a tray, uh, a truck, or anything where you can get it out of the storage, I always keep it with you until you know your next uh, place you're gonna be in. You can just. Make sure you keep all that food, which is the best as possible. Right. Yeah. Right. What kind of stove to use for canning in a grid down situation is what she adds. Thank you so much, uh, Sharice Barnes, asked that question. Now, we talked about in that other video about a dual, a dual fuel stove. A dual fuel, D-U-E-L fuel stove, you can get it from Amazon, and they use either butane or they have an adapter for the other propane, right? Now, using either one of those for canning, because I've canned, make sure that the BTU, make sure you don't get no stove that has a uh, low, um, BTU, you want to get something that'll put out some heat. Some of, that, some, that, some of these stoves don't get hot enough to boil water. So make sure you get a good one. Hey, Cali Homestead. Cali Homesteading with Pooh Bear. Hey. <laughs> so, yes, you want to get a dual fuel stove. And the reason why I'm saying that is because sometimes you can find butane, but you can't find the propane. Sometimes you can find the propane, but you can't find the butane, right? And instead of having to have all these different stoves around, that one stove would serve an amazing purpose. But if you have to, you can get one or the other, but a dual fuel stove, that would be an excellent investment. And yes, you can use it for canning. My little butane stove, I've used it for canning. Yes. Okay. Now. And you know what? I just heard somebody said, uh, read some, a comment about somebody cooking over a open fire. Now to cook over an open, to can on an open flame outside. If you're water bath canning, excellent. If you're pressure canning and you have that all American canner, excellent, it can handle it. I have a little Presto that I just don't know if it would survive cooking on an open flame. I just don't know. And then of course there's that temperature regulation as well if it's an open flame you have to be able to regulate the temperature as well for pressure canning so that is an option but just make sure that whatever canner you have that it can handle being on an open flame okay says who you thank you so much for your super chat says who you she says resources for shelf stable foods including dry milks, uh, staples, meats. Is that meats? No, that says meals, fruit, veggies, etc. The ready store, emergency essentials, LDS cannery, Augustin Farms, Walmart. Great sources, especially if one doesn't can or garden. Thank you. That's right. 
that's right you can go and buy these meals already ready you sure can um carol some people do use a camp stove for canning sure Ooh, do camp stove yeah with the double burners on them some people do Oh yeah, I think it's like the same one. One second, y'all. Oh no, I'm, I'm only at 29. Okay. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. We got a little easier. Okay. So you all, yeah, that is what... Who just cooking up somebody's food? Let me go back. Somebody named OMG Speechless, I think. Okay, I missed that comment. <laughs> I missed that comment. Love Notes was responding to somebody's comment about someone cooking up somebody's food. I don't know what that's about. Um, I'm sorry I missed that comment. <laughs> so sorry I missed that comment. Thank you, Tree Heart or Tree HRT. Thank you so much. Hi there. Okay, you all. So now I think we have, I think we have um, helped each other a lot when it comes to. When it comes to finding whatever way you can to get your food, whether you grow your groceries or buy your groceries, getting your water supply. So Mr. H is in charge of water for us. Yeah. I do the canning, he's in charge of the water, okay? Yeah. Now, when it comes to getting those things, you all do your best to put them in every nook and cranny that you can find in your house and in some of your family members houses if you have to do that okay like i said though make sure they like-minded make sure they know if they if, hey if they're like-minded you don't have to explain to them why you don't open this okay if you got to go through a whole two hour spiel about why they can't open it uh, we ain't talking about them <laughs> we ain't talking about them okay all right okay now okay so when it comes to that we've talked about that we've talked about, we've talked about methods of cooking food because so many of you have shared some wonderful wonderful things okay wait a minute somebody just said a comment so, oh, Rocky Hill, this was the comment. Miss Peaches 311. Hate when I try to put food up and my family member cooks it and say, let tomorrow take care of itself. Oh, man. That's sad. My heart goes out to you. I am so sorry that you have to be in a situation like that. I am so sorry that you have to be in a situation like this. Wow. Let tomorrow take care of itself. That, that's crazy. Y'all, for me. Is there any kind of way you can get some kind of. Uh, cabinet with a lock on it? Uh, Perhaps. You know? Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. That's wonderful. Yeah, get some kind of cabinet with a lock. That right there would be a good 
alternative if you had something you can put in your I don't like you said your family member so I don't know which family I don't know if it's a spouse or somebody else if it's not a spouse and you have your own room or something like that you know those cabinets with the double doors that you can open and close and they come with a lock on it like Mr. H just said maybe that might be a good option some to kind of, put your jars and stuff in some kind of way keep, you can be creative to lock, lock it up to lock it up yeah yeah put it in a, a private space or or yeah. something yeah. because that has got to be horrible y'all know if y'all can foods you already know you already know the work that goes into prepping the food before you even can it yeah. You already know there's some work involved. Mm -hmm. So to go through all of that and then have somebody to tell you that let tomorrow take care of stuff and they just open up all your stuff like that. that ain't good. You ain't seen a war. <laughs> yeah. Until you open my food. Yeah. It's okay. Gotta, gotta be some kind of way to that's off limits. Yeah. Don't touch it. Especially your proteins. M meat is expensive if you're buying it. It's very expensive. So to buy things like that that are expensive and then you can them up like my salmon. Y'all, we got that salmon at such a good price. We went back for some more. Have they had it since? They haven't had it. Haven't had it since. So we were asked a question in that, in that salmon video, how can y'all afford to buy that salmon like that? It was on sale. Yeah. That's how. And I think when we was doing those scavenging hunts, we was we were spying on prices. We was, we, was, we was really seeing exactly what to come back for. You know, that's why. Right, I, that's how we knew. Yeah, when it, yeah. When, whenever you out and about, you gotta be thinking on two different levels, okay? You're taking care of your business on what you're doing, but you also, taking inventory on what's out there and what's right. the price. Right. And then when you go to a grocery store, you can see how much chicken is. Now chicken is so expensive. Yeah. Thighs is like nine dollars a pack and then thirteen dollars a pack. We saw some chicken thighs. Man. Thirteen dollars. Yeah. That used to be one of the cheapest meats you can buy with some chicken thighs or some leg quarters. But you all find a way somebody said in the comments see about getting a foot locker where you can put an actual lock on it yeah get you a chain and lock. Well, well they probably wouldn't need a chain with the foot locker because yeah. they got the little latch that you can put the lock through oh yeah yeah do that you lock up the pineapple jam <laughs> oh lord please don't lock that up i'm not gonna lock that yeah, because a lot of people be slipping on pancakes. Now. I, I know you've been sneaking my jam. Mm -hmm. A lot of people be slipping on simple stuff that you grew up with that grandmother and mother cooked for you. And then when you get older, you think about, oh man, I remember I used to love grandmother's pancakes. Yes. Okay, just imagine grid down situation. There's nothing but beans and rice. Yeah. You season those up and then you got a little egg. Something a little sweet or something you can't afford to go out and get a cake or whatever. What about those pancakes? Yeah, you know, yeah. what about those strawberries? You can kind of create a little joy and happiness while you right. while you can. Because believe it or not, sweet stuff when you're in a stressful situation, having something sweet to eat, even if it's just a piece of candy, will kind of help ease your stress, will kind of help calm you down just a little bit, right. So having that is going to be important, you all. And even for some who like need to have, if you have issues with your blood sugar and you depend on something sweet every now and then to keep that up, like in that movie, uh, Paul Blart, <laughs> Mall Cop. Oh yeah. Oh boy, that movie was so funny. <laughs> every time he, when he would have his issues with sugar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he but, would fall down, yeah. Yeah, he would just collapse all of a sudden, right? That funny movie. If you've never seen it, that's what I'm talking about. 
but having something you know a little something sweet to kind of help with that that does make a big difference you all okay so now y'all i just really we really just wanted to come on here and just kind of have a conversation with y'all because we knew that if we came on here and we shared with y'all some of the concerns we knew that and and all of you would share with us your concerns we knew that it was going to be some excellent feedback yes. in the comment section from people who know about this people who know what to do because some of some of you have been doing this for decades so you are our teachers yes you know what to do you know yes. how to do this and that's why i talk about so much even though i'm not a prepper we've never been considering ourselves as preppers but we've always had such a respect and an admiration for people who thought like that because it was like man if don't that never happen that's fine, but if something do happen, these people are gonna be straight. So we've always had a respect for people who went under the name preppers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We've always had such a tremendous respect. And, and, you just, know? and just like you say, that name, people talk about them so bad. Because of a name because of prepper. Yeah. When you go under that title, prepper then immediately some folks will be like, oh my God, here we go. They crazy, they, they, oh my goodness. And not only that, like when somebody talk bad about preppers, then you got other people that'll get on the bandwagon, they follow the leader. Yeah. I mean, you really haven't studied what's going on, why they prep. Right. Because they have a knowledge on what's going to happen and what could happen. So they could be helping you out. That's true. They could be teaching you and showing you the way. Like they doing us. But, because but, one of our favorites is Canadian Prepper. Canadian Prepper, yes. I'm telling you. Yeah. We truly enjoy his channel. Shout out to you, Canadian Prepper. Canadian Prepper, that's right. If you see us, give us a shout out. We really enjoy his channel. Yeah. yeah uh, we, Angry Prepper is another one. Yeah, Angry Prepper, yeah. Um, uh, City Prepping is another one. Yes. It's, it's quite a few of them. But I'm telling you, I think Canadian Premier is the one that we enjoy the most. Like, he has a, 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 a good channel, great content, and good information. And yeah. he don't need our help with no shout out. Yeah. But I'm, we're just sharing with you that we enjoy his channel. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, that's right. He is one of the best. He really is, y'all. And we really, really enjoy him. Yes, the moderators, y'all on point. Y'all be doing the thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> y'all be doing it. Homeschool knockouts. Thank you so much. <laughs> I just prepped dry navy beans and black beans using your method yesterday. Having a canning party tomorrow. I've canned using a lot of your recipes. No more fear of canning. Oh, oh I'm so man. happy to hear that. Ching, ching. I'm so happy yeah, to hear yeah. that. <laughs> no, no fear. More fear. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. Can I be frank with y'all? I'm sick of getting messages about fear of canning. I'm yeah. just being honest, I don't wanna hear it no more. Just go ahead and do it. Y'all better put that fear to the side like ASAP. Your fear of hunger should be greater than your fear of canning. Oh, I like Okey that. Okey doke. Okay, your fear. That's a t-shirt. Yes, your fear of starving. That's a t-shirt Should right be now. greater than your fear of canning, okay? That's a t-shirt. If you need a motivation, just like think that. about not being able to eat for a few months. That's a reminder. Amen, amen. That's a reminder. Let the church say it. Amen, amen, and amen again. Yeah. Okay? So put that fear to the side, y'all, and pick up that canner. If you got a canner that you've been looking at for two years. Now, come on now. I'm telling you, I be looking at these emails and I be like, what? Wow. Two years? Two years, huh? You ain't canned in two years because of fear? And your can have been sitting there for two years? Mm. That's heavy now. Come on now, y'all. Wow. My oldest daughter, she 30, y'all. Hold up, I know how old my child is. Just give me a minute. 
I think she's 34. If I'm wrong. <laughs> this baby 34 years of age and she always say don't get mama started about canning and you talking about you scared <laughs> you don't tell mama you scared of nothing don't tell me nothing about I'm scared okay <laughs> that tripod broke I didn't even realize it Y'all put that scared stuff to the side. Please don't. Please put that scared stuff to the side. Yeah. Pick up that can up. Yeah. If you break a few jaws, so it's like riding a bike. When you put that baby on that bicycle, you know they gonna fall. Yeah. You already know, even if they got you, have you ever seen a child fall with training wheels on the bike? And you be like, how they did that? At some point, they gonna fall. They gonna turn the steering wheel too far. They might fall. But you know it's gonna be all right, baby. That's okay. I know you failed. You hurt your knee. It's okay. Mama gonna spray some, some little antiseptic. It's gonna be all right. But you do encourage them to do what? Get right back on their bike and try it again. You ain't gonna tell them to put the bike down forever. Turn the, turn the temperature down some and try it again. Look. Get on up there on that bicycle. You can do it. You can do it. Put that candle on the stove. Read the directions. <laughs> <laughs> Read the directions. But pick up that candle and start canning. I don't care if you don't do nothing but can two jars of carrots or something. Something real simple. <laughs> yeah. Get used to doing it. Yes. Getting, yeah. Build, build your momentum up. And then you put like six in there and eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then don't let it be something that's got to can for a long time either. Let it be something that don't need to can before, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Don't do an hour and a half with beans and meat. Don't don't go there first. Unless you break, you bold, go on and go for it. Now, some of you be diving right in. You yeah. be like, I got this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They can do it. You can do it now. You can do it. And I promise you this, mark my words, I've said this before, mark my words, when you start canning, you gonna be upset with yourself that you did not start sooner because you were saying you were scared. Yeah. You gonna be like, I should have been doing this. Mm -hmm. What was I afraid of? I promise you, I promise you. Like Bernie Mac be saying, I swear for long. <laughs> <laughs> How you say it? I swear for long. Bernie <laughs> back. You're going to be wishing you had done it for two years. You're going to wish you had started it a long time ago, y'all. Go on and do it now. Go on and do it. Okay? Thank you, Sandrine. I, I believe I'm saying it correctly. Thank you, Sandrine. From Canada. Oh, man. Okay. Any idea on where to find canners that are not expensive? You just said it. Facebook mark, uh, um, Facebook Market, uh, Craigslist. You know, whatever your budget is. And and believe me, you might have some people out here that may have multiple canners and trying to get rid of one. Yeah trying to get rid of them because they got so many you see now if you got two pressure canners I'm not gonna tell you to get rid of your canner having two pressure canners is a blessing I got two that's a blessing because if for any reason one becomes faulty you got a backup and trust me you need a backup to your yeah. canner it's always good to yeah have you a need a backup in fact if you can you need a backup for your backup okay pressure canners that's not something you want to have a situation where you just can't ever buy them and you can't find them like we did before. Remember that? And remember when me and Mr. H went on a hunt to find candles for everybody who could not find them and we went looking for them, y'all. Yeah. Didn't we, babe? Yeah, we, we went we, looking yeah. for them yes, and we, we found canners and we shipped them to y'all. Yes, we did. Yeah, I 
I remember the scavenging. Yeah, we went on a hunt for y'all, and we found, I don't know how many candles we found, and y'all were cash apping us your money because you had to pay for them, right? So you cash up us your money and your shipping, and we got them candles in the mail to y'all so y'all can start canning your own foods. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yes, we did. And we don't want to have to do that again. So y'all, get ahead of it. If yeah. you see them, go get them. Stay ahead of the game. Stay ahead. We don't mind helping because that's what we want to do. But we don't want to have to do that again. So right now, while they're getting this good, if you don't have your canner, go on and get yourself one. Okay? Because what, Cannon Squad is in full effect? Cannon now? Squad is in full effect. Y'all know we finna roll into Cannon season again. Uh-oh. Do you have a Keurig? Uh, Miss uh, Printed? No. We have a regular coffee pot. <laughs> we got a regular coffee pot. Okay. All right, y'all. The All-American is in stock right now. If y'all can get that All-American, if that's in your budget, and you want to know if, it, if it's worth it, for those of you who got an All-American, you will agree with me when I say it's worth every dime. Yeah. It's worth, woo, about to lose, about to lose y'all. Mr. Worth. H hit that curve. Oh no, baby. You throwing us, you throwing our subs away. <laughs> All right, there we go. So yes, it's worth every penny. If you, if, if that All-American is, is in your budget, then yes, y'all, it is worth every single dime. Okay? Yes, it is. Okay, y'all. Alright y'all, so is there any anything else that we need to discuss before we get off of this live for this evening? Anything else that we need to discuss? Yes, we gave some cannons away. Are we still doing the giveaway, the 200k giveaway? You better believe it. <laughs> we just had a lot going on and we couldn't get that live up. We couldn't do it for nothing. See is in full swing and we appreciate you all supporting the seed store yes. and yes it is a labor of love no I'm not increasing the prices thank you very much mm, not doing it I get your emails but I'm not doing it because this got to be affordable everybody can't afford three and four dollar packs of seeds with 20 seeds in them so we send you 20 seeds for a dollar 25. Okay? Yeah, and we we trying to keep it that way. Now we did have to go up by a quarter from last year because there were some things that increased in price. So we did, and when we did the numbers, all it took was a quarter and it'll cover. Yeah. It. Yes. So yes, we love offering the seed store. But we even discussed the fact that we may not be able to do it next year if things keep going the way they're going. But that's a video for another day. But some things are getting ridiculous and even harder to find. But we're gonna so try. We're gonna try our best though. We're gonna try. We're gonna try our best though. Because we get good quality seeds. We don't buy no, we not getting no cheap seeds, y'all. We're getting good quality seed trust me we're not no we're getting good seed and the seeds that we get are seeds that we plant in our own garden yes. hopefully y'all can see i hope i haven't lost everybody so no that seed store means a lot to us and like i said it is a labor of love it takes a lot of time and effort to do that it really does. It takes a lot of time to do that. Hours and hours. It takes a lot of time. I don't have a crew. It's me. And when Mr. H is at home, he helps me. But other than that, it's just me. Okay? And we work really hard to get those seeds in your hand because the goal is to grow your groceries. We want everyone to grow their groceries, y'all. Yes. That's the goal, okay? Yeah. 
and we tried our best. I know that Amish Paste Tomato was our best seller for tomato seed last season. We could not get that seed in. And the, the, the grower was saying April, and we'll try for April, but for a lot of us, April is too late. For us, April tomato plants are going in the ground in April, for us here in the mm. South. Yeah. Okay? For some of you, maybe not, but for us, we already got our tomatoes in the ground, though plants, right? So, all right, y'all. So, yeah. But in any case, y'all, the fact that so many of you are getting these seeds, that screams to us that more and more people are growing their own food and at least trying to. And the good thing about it is if for any reason you haven't quite learned how to do this yet, you haven't spent $4 on a pack of seeds, right? Yeah. So we love what we're doing. We really do. Don't think we don't. We love what we're doing. Yes, we do. All right, y'all. So now uh, the next thing is uh, I hit, somebody had a question here. They said they needed some help. What do you need help with? Please, please. What do you need help with? Please verify what you need help with. You said please help, but you want specific I don't know what you need help with okay so please put that in there I agree with you Deborah we we also get seeds from Johnny's mm -hmm. we sure do we also get seeds from Johnny's okay Yeah, special soil. Um, if you're talking about for growing food, whether you're growing it in the ground or in containers, you do want a soil that is rich in organic matter. Okay? You don't want to just grow in plain dirt. If you've never, if you're just now putting a garden in the ground and you've never grown anything in that area before, then you'll want to add some organic matter so you can even go, depending on the size of your garden now, I don't know the size of your garden, but you can go to places like Lowe's, Home Depot, and you can get bags of compost. You don't need a lot, depending on the size of your garden that is. So if you're growing in just, let's just say that you're growing in a little four by eight area, where there's in ground or raised bed, get yourself three or four bags of compost and put that in your bed and just gently work that into the soil don't till it in if it's not if you if it's just grass then you do want to break that up okay yeah, you, you want to break that up a little bit grass all the way yeah i know you you know you have those methods where you there's no till and all of that and people put cardboard down and if you do decide to do that you're going to need more compost than what i'm sharing with you but if you have a little four by eight area, then you want to till that, or you can even use a till third, which is different from a tiller or a cultivator. And you just break up the top few inches of it to get rid of something like that, or you just use the shovel and turn it and turn it and that will expose the roots and the sun will kill the tree. You just let it sit for about a week or so. Just let it sit. Turn it over and, leave it. and then come back with your garden hoe and some compost. And you're gonna rake, you're gonna just kind of rake that in. Once you break that stuff up, you're just gonna rake that in. And that's adding organic matter to that area. It really don't take a lot. We've done that before. Yeah. It don't take a lot to start a new garden area. Yeah, yeah but make sure you pull all the weeds up and then you rake the compost in. That's what you you wanna, yeah, you want to get that compost put in, okay? And if you do containers, then you can just buy some uh, container mix, potting mix, 
it has the organic matter, it has everything in it. You can just use that to grow in containers. Yeah. You don't have to buy just straight compost. You can buy a potting mix. Okay? I hope that made sense what I just said. If not, I have a video on that somewhere in the 2021, either in the 2020 or the 2021 garden series in that playlist. You can find our playlist and it's there on what we did to just start a new garden. Brand new, grass, weeds, everything, okay? They said we're breaking up. All right. If you don't have a tiller for the grass, you can use a shovel and just go down and turn that over. If you don't have a tiller, you don't have to go and spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on a tiller. Just use a shovel and go down about six inches and turn that over. Use the shovel or use a garden hoe to break that up. And you'll need to smooth that out. You'll take your compost and put it over the top of that. Your bags of compost that I just told you to get. And you'll lightly work that in. That's it. Make a hole. Plant your starts. Or if you're starting from seed, put a seed in. It's really that simple. Add your fertilizers. We use feather meal and bone meal. You can buy those from any big box store or blood meal. I know you see a lot of videos that says it's complicated. It's not. It's not. I know we make things complicated, but it's not complicated. We've done it. And our gardens are beautiful. We've done it. Okay? So please go back and watch our playlist, 2020 and 2021 Garden Season playlist. And we've got videos in there where we've done that. We've actually finna do it again. <laughs> yes, we are. We actually finna do it again. We just did it with our watermelon patch. Yeah. Our watermelon patch, it was under cover, but we just used our little cultivator and we just cultivated the area where our watermelon patch was because we was growing in containers. So we decided to put it in the ground and we just cultivated the area. And then we're gonna go back and add some compost to that area. Now we're covering it with ground cover, but we're gonna go back and add compost to the whole area and just kind of rake that in a bit. Put the ground cover down, make the holes. We're gonna fertilize the holes before we put our watermelon starts in. And we're gonna water. And we're gonna get some good watermelon because it ain't hard to start a new garden. I hope that makes sense, but if it don't, that's okay. Stay tuned, we're gonna be showing you what we do, okay? Any other questions, you all? Thank y'all so much. Okay, Life is Good says, at the Pea Ranch, I did that and it worked great. My loofahs grew over the fence to the neighbor's garden. We, ooh, them loofahs. Well, them loofahs be going, don't they? Uh, can somebody please post the seed store? Let me see. They said, where do you buy, sell your seeds at? Can somebody put the link, one of our moderators, will you put the link um, in the comments so they can see where to go for the seeds? Thank you, miss. Let me see, I can't see. No sleek nickname, I like that. <laughs> Okay, you all. All right, y'all. If um, there's nothing else that you all want to go over, no other assistance that you need, that you might be able to get help from us or from one of the beautiful viewers that's also in the chats. If y'all buying loofah seeds from our seed store, look, our loofah seeds are excellent. I got to admit to you. Yeah, they are. Our loofah seeds are like, man. Even our Thai loofah seeds, we didn't put them on the store because the chickens got to them. 
but we we originally ordered those loofah, the Thai loofah seeds and the regular loofah seeds. We originally ordered them from Baker Creek. Yes. And the Thai loofah seeds, they said, had a poor germination. Not only did all our seeds germinate, but they grew for us beautifully. We had yeah. so many, the chickens took them out. Yeah. They, they had so all many. Up the, all up in the trees. They were all in the tree. We got the videos. Y'all seen it. If y'all if y'all follow our Lufa Lane journey, then y'all seen our Lufas hanging from the trees, right? Yeah. You've seen them all up in the bush. And this past this past season, they literally skipped over where we had them, went into the garden, attached themselves to the trellises in the garden, and was growing down the trellises in the garden area. Yeah, yeah, they was everywhere. They were every where but i'm telling you if she you put, all you got the link to the seeds she put it in there okay. if you all order seeds from us know that our goal for you is to grow these things and save the save the seed y'all yeah. please save these seeds yes. we have got to save our every seed variety that we have on the store with the exception of I think it's one thing we have on the seed store. Oh, lakeside spinach. It's a hybrid. We don't have, we don't do, you know, genetically modified. We don't even have to talk about that. You know, you already know, right? But that's the only hybrid that's on the seed store. Everything else is heirloom, meaning you can save the seeds for yourself so you don't have to keep buying them. We don't want y'all to keep coming back to us. Yeah. See, we see, want you to save. Yeah. And see, a hybrid is not. Uh, a genetically modified seed. It's just a mixture between two seeds. Right. And, and that's the reason why it doesn't um, reproduce its own seed. It's, right. it's not a fake seed. It's real. It's real. But it's just the way it's a cross between two. Right. To make this, uh, the, the, the plant what it is. Yes. Yeah. Now someone said they did, they did get some Amish paste seeds from us. If you got seeds from us last year with the Amish paste, they still good this year too. In fact, I don't get rid of seeds. Seeds last for years. I know they say, you know what, get them every year. But if you got, I got seeds from, I can't even tell you how old they are. Some of them like nine years old. And they still grow just fine, right? But you all, the goal for us, we want to see y'all learn how to save these seeds so you don't have to keep buying them. Yes. The loofah, I'm telling y'all, just grow some loofah. Once they dry out, all you need is one or two. You'll have seeds indefinitely. Okay, you'll have enough seeds to last you for 10 years from one loofah. Especially if you're only planting five or six plants every season or 10 plants every season, you got enough loofah to last you for years. You can eat it if you harvest it early. You can eat it. If you let it go all the way to seed, you got something to make yourselves some sponges with for bathing, for cleaning, and you got seeds to do it again the next year. That's what we want you all to do with the tomatoes, with the bell peppers, with the uh, uh, carrots, but you know that's a two-year crop, right? You gotta let that yeah. go to seed and all of that. And then, jalapeno you know, peppers. Jalapenos, all of that. The goal here is for you to learn to grow your groceries, save your seeds. There's a beautiful book, Seed to Seed, yeah. that you can get on Amazon. It'll teach you how to save seed for everything. Yes. Just about everything you could grow, it'll teach you how to save the seeds, okay? So please, we don't want y'all to keep buying seeds from us year after year or from anywhere. We want you to save your, your own, own seed. Seeds. And the more you grow a crop that is in, it might the seed might not even come from your side of town, right? It might not even come from your side of the country. But the more you grow that crop, it starts to acclimate itself to your area. So the next year, it just gets better and better. The seed, as you save it, it gets better and better year after year for your location. So please, say a good investment, that book, Seed to Seed, learn how to eggplant seed, carrot seed, lettuce seed, whatever you need. It'll teach you how to save it, okay?
right, y'all. Okay, Autumn Whispers, that seed was the jambalaya okra. And, oh, it's good. And it did produce well. Oh, and the heavy hitter did too. The heavy hitter did really well too. The, the heavy hitter is heirloom. The jambalaya is a hybrid. The thing about okra, you gotta get, you gotta harvest those seeds. I mean, those uh, okra early. Early. You gotta get to them early before they get hard. That's right. And, and, and stay on top of those because. Yes. Because they'll produce so quick. Like wow, the okra is already ready. Exactly, exactly. Now, um, this year though, we have a surprise for y'all. Somebody sent us some seeds regarding that okra. We're gonna talk about that in another video. But we are still gonna plant a few of the jambalaya, a few, because like I said, that, that's my favorite. It tastes so good to me. But somebody sent us some okra seed that we gotta plant. Yeah. We cannot. And there's a not story. Plant. It's a story behind. It's a beautiful story behind it. Yeah. As well. So I know we're going to be growing this over. I yeah. know we are, and I know we're going to be growing it by itself because we want to get a pure seed from them the following year. Yeah. So I'm excited about this, and God willing, if it does well for us this season, we may offer it on the seed store the next year. It is an heirloom variety. It is a rare seed and we are excited to grow it for ourselves too. Yes. So y'all stay tuned for that. Yeah. It's a very rare seed and there's a serious history behind this okra seed. Yes indeed. Yeah. Yes indeed. Alright, so now is there anything else? CN6614, we talked about Big Bertha. We're gonna air layer her. We're giving her one last shot. We're gonna air layer her and we're gonna do some cuttings on her to move her to a different location. Yeah. But she ain't gonna make it right where she is. She'll never make it there. No, she ain't gonna make it. There. Yeah, we've come to that con conclusion. All right, y'all. Anything else, y'all? Ad Love says they've been using Lufa since 1980. Ex wow. Expert on this. What do you think about Burgess Seeds? I've never ordered seeds from Burgess Seeds. Actually, I, I don't even think I've ever heard of them. No, I have heard of them. But I've never ordered anything from them. I don't know anything about them. You all. Let's see. Lasagna says she don't like them. She don't like what? Burgess seeds. Oh, okay. She says she don't like them. I've never heard of them. I, I, I've heard of them, but I've never bought anything from them. Let's see. Okay. Um, B. Crouch said, are you going to be excited about that? a garden greenhouse in Georgia. Okay. Nikki's Nook. Um, I don't know what your budget is for a greenhouse. I can tell you where to get one if you don't want to make it yourself because we did a cattle panel greenhouse that we love. Yeah. You get hot up in there, Joe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We we'll get hot in there. But we love it. Mm -hmm. But our goal for the future at some point when we can finish this fence project y'all i'm telling you when we finish this fence project we're going to start saving for the greenhouse that we really 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 want and it's gonna come from growers solutions is where we are hoping to get it from because we haven't been able to find anyone who carries that style for a, a more reasonable price. But we know it's gonna cost the one that we want and we know we have to save for it and we know it's gonna take us some time to save for it. So, Mr. H, you can't be slanging us. Okay, okay. <laughs> I guess I got caught up in a moment. 
I'm sorry y'all our website is not the best it can only handle so much so when like a ton of people go at one time it will shut the site down I've learned that from one of our viewers who shared that with me in the comment section they taught me something they learned me something but it's there it's uh, www.ahomesteadheart.com it's a homestead heart thank you so much Azania she's putting it in there okay now you all Maria Graham just brought two fruit trees remember if you got a if you got a backyard and you get those extra benefits for you to go and buy food remember fruit trees are considered a food okay all right that's all I'm gonna say fruit <laughs> trees are considered a food yep you can, you can get them yes uh, car. Yes. Okay, y'all. So, if you go to Amazon and just type in seed to seed, it'll come up for you. Experimental Gardener is giving some advice about using old soil, and she's spot on because you sure can do it. Baby, you keep throwing us. Yeah, you got to hope you got I'm, I'm holding us. I'm holding us. Uh, Darla Tidwell, what is she talking about? Uh, I'm not sure. Just ordered seed to seed. That's a good investment. You will learn how to save seed. 2% said, don't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> they checking me out. They checking you out, babe. Don't you go to sleep. Okay. You go ahead, Dozer Moser. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. They said they used to buy their seeds and they listed where they bought them from, but they don't have to buy them anymore because now they have all of their own. That's what I'm talking about right there. Y'all start building up a seed supply so you don't have to keep buying them. Yep. And I'm gonna tell you something. If you're trying to store your seeds for a long, 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 long time, some people put them in something and put them in the freezer. I don't do that. I have a container. I have a, uh, a storage bin, a little drawer with, with the uh, drawers on it. And that's where I keep my seeds. I don't do nothing special. I don't put them in the deep freeze. Now, if I was doing a, what they call an emergency seed bank, where I wanted to ensure that my seeds would be viable for 20 years or longer, then I probably would make a spot in the deep freezer to keep them there, but I wouldn't go in them though. I wouldn't touch them from year to year. I would never pull from them. I would never take seeds out. They would just stay in the deep freeze. I wouldn't open them. In fact, I would even put them in Mylar bags and seal the Mylar bag, label the Mylar bag on the seed packets that I have in there and in the freezer they would go and there they would stay. I would never touch them. That's an emergency seed bank. But my seeds that I just plant from year to year, I don't do nothing special to them, okay? See if I can see. Hi, Maureen Roberts. Welcome. Sharon. What she say? So yes, you all. Oh yeah, maybe I should go ahead and take this time before we leave to to do what? Address something. Darth underscore X says, came in late. We are driving too. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome in. Hope's Pharmacy. I do love her name. Say it again. <laughs> Hope's Pharmacy, but it's, it's with an F. Oh, okay. Farm uh -huh. and then a C. I do like that. <laughs> Go ahead. I like that. Yes, that's unique. That's nice. Okay. You ought to see all the knowledge that's being shared in these comments right now. P. 
people are asking questions and folks are jumping in they're asking I do like that yeah please keep doing that I love that I love it we help each other <laughs> <laughs> we helping each other we helping each other out yes now look Irma why would you put the seeds in the freezer Again, it's for an emergency seed bank. It's for you if if an a complete breakdown happened and you can't buy seeds nowhere and you still got your seeds that you could just plant from year to year, fine. But putting them in the freezer preserves them even longer. Mm. So to speak. If yeah. you package them properly now, you got to package them so that there's no moisture that will get to them. Package them properly, preferably mylar. Push all the air out of them. You want to get all the air out and put them in the freezer. And they will, and, but that doesn't mean that you go in them from year to year and that's what, and you plant those. No, those are not to be touched. They just stay in the freezer. That's an emergency seed bank. Okay? So there's a difference in just your average, the seeds that you just keep for year to year planting. I don't do anything special with those. But if I'm going to create an emergency seed bank, then I will put my seeds in my lard and put them in the freezer. Okay. All right. Um... Uh, Dibbler Homestead, no. I don't have cuttings on the site because Bertha has some fungus issues. So I won't do that until I get that healed. I don't want to sell any diseased type of cuttings to anybody. Okay? So I need to get her straight first. Thank y'all so much. Hope's Pharmacy is a retired nurse, baby. Oh, great. Less medication, more vegetation. Oh, Amen man. and amen again. That's great. Being self-sufficient in wells. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Okay. Thank you, Humble Servants Homestead. So good to see y'all. I think... We got y'all's package, but we're going to talk about that in another video. We was like so amazed. Just so amazed. That was beautiful, but we're going to do another video on that. Okay. Making sure I ain't miss nothing. Mulberries. Okay, you all. I'm going to give y'all a heads up. I don't know if you remember last year we were struggling to find that Pakistan mulberry. Yeah. They have plenty of mulberries, right? But this Pakistan mulberry is probably the most popular because the berries get so big. And to me, being able to get a larger berry for jams or making juices or whatever I want to do with it, plus the taste profile is amazing. Right now, we got ours from Ison's Nursery. We didn't get but one because they 50 bucks. Yeah. yeah. They fifty dollars. So we, so we to, ain't give but one. We have to wait. For, we gonna have to wait for them to grow to make some. Yeah, we gotta wait on that uh, next year. Yeah. <laughs> but we got one. So if you're looking for that Pakistan mulberry, Ison's Nursery had it, and we order from Ison's every year as we work to build our orchard. We've never had a problem with their trees. Okay. Now, Double Decker says, I remind her of her grandma. <laughs> Even though she's older than me, she's like, she's Oh. Uh. <laughs> That's a beautiful compliment. Yeah, it is. You feel about your grandmama like I feel about mine. I'm telling you. There's this uh, YouTube he make me sick because he ever put no videos out he gets on my nerves and the name of his channel is gardening with goo 
And we always talk about stereotyping people, right? Because I know people love to do that sometimes. But this young man had his mama on the channel one day, a long time ago. And she reminded me so much of my big mama. Just everything about her, you know, just reminded me of my big mama, like in my Madea, like when it comes to gardening, this is what you do, you, you know, you just, you know, and I was just so in love with her. And I'm like, he ain't putting out no more videos with her. What's his name? Gardening. Gardening with Goo. Gardening with Goo. Go ahead and make but some videos, But he didn't put no goo. videos out. He, has, he just does one every like six, seven months or something. I'm like, yeah. I want to see Big Mama. What she yeah, at? Yeah, you want to see Big Mama. So his, his mother reminds me so much of big mamas everywhere and right see, and see see he had those uh those uh nice raised beds he had collard greens he was grown yeah in raised beds in right? raised beds yeah. yeah and grew a lot of them and big mama was out there harvesting them greens oh you should have seen them <laughs> gardening with goo yeah I, I think i remember yes gardening with goo so now Boys and blessings, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that because I know I'm, I'm just very partial to the children. I'm so, when it comes to these babies, I'm just always thinking about the babies. We gotta look out for our babies. I'm sorry about the camera rocking y'all, but we gotta look out for our babies. Yes, we do. We really do, and that's why we're starting. Uh, we're starting a series called Little Growers. My daughter is a elementary school teacher, and I had a conversation with her about this because children, the children are interested. Because some of them watch our channel. We even got pictures in the mail from people who watch our channel that their grandchildren and their children are being inspired to grow food by watching our channel and so we're starting a series called little growers because we want our babies to get involved with learning how to grow food they want to do it that's, that's a great idea. so our little growers we've got to get them involved with growing and my daughter is going to play a part in that because even though she teaches math and science, she wants to incorporate that as like woo, a little home project for her fifth and sixth grade students to get them involved with growing food. And we want to be able to take this program from school to school. We want little growers all over this country. Yes, we do. So we are going to do that. We're working this out right now. But we want to get our babies involved. Little girl. That is a, a that is like my heart there, these babies, okay? So you all laughing at Big Mama. Y'all know our big mamas are something else, y'all. Our big mamas are <laughs> They didn't play no games. They didn't play either. They didn't play either. If you had a big mom or my dear, okay, you already know. They wasn't about no game. They wasn't about that foolishness. <laughs> and all that talking back you see children do nowadays. No, they didn't play see, that. I'm like big mom when it comes to that. But that's a whole nother video. There's a whole I'm like big mama when it comes to them they're a little disrespectful children. <laughs> I'm a little different. I'm serious. <laughs> it's my children. <laughs> I'm serious. Woo! I will roll your whole body across this floor. You roll your eyes at me. That's I'm gonna roll all of you. <laughs> that's I'm serious, that Mrs. H. I'm trying to tell you, but ask my children. Mama had a good time. Look, we used to have a great time. We believed in going on vacations, doing things, having a good time. But mama did not tolerate disrespect. I just didn't do it. Now, I'm good to you now. You my children. I'm good to you. I love you. I'm going to take care of you. But one thing you ain't going to do. 
I ain't gonna say nothing else about that. Mm. It ain't gonna be disrespectful. <laughs> now look. Let's see here. What tools, what three tools do I recommend? A shovel, a nice iron rake, and a garden hoe would be my top three. A good shovel, a good metal rake, and a garden hoe would be my top three in the garden because that's what I use most. Believe it or not, tools that use fuel hardly ever see my garden. But things that we do but with hand, that's what I use the most. Did we lose everybody? trying to see it says reconnecting loppers are a good one but it's not in my top three it would probably be in my top five though loppers are excellent can y'all see us still can y'all see us can y'all see us okay okay Okay, so that would be my top. I can't see my comments anymore. This one is not acting because right. The phone's oh man! Oh, Snapdragon. Okay, I got a solution. Okay, you all. So yeah. Okay, good, everybody can see us now, okay. Yes, if you can find your tools at uh, garage sales, wherever you can find some good tools. Do I recommend buying cheap tools? No, no, no. We bought some inexpensive tools last year and the shovel is already broke. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Trying to save a dollar. Yeah. Right? Didn't last a year. Not even a full year. But you do have to get what your money can buy, okay? Yeah. Because be that's real, what our money could buy. Just be real careful and gentle with it and put it away. Yeah, because we do put our tools back in our little barn. We don't mis mishandle them. We do put our tools back out. I mean, back away when we use them, right? But the tools, sometimes, if, you know, you get what you pay for. Now, one thing I would say is that Corona, the tools, Corona. <laughs> Gotta make that plain. <laughs> Nowadays, you gotta make it plain. It's C O R O N A. Corona makes some really good, good tools. The only thing I will say is that they are so expensive. Mm. They are so expensive. Well, maybe they should. We can't afford that right now. Maybe they should stick to making beer then. I'm just messing with you. No, not they don't make the beer. That's a different company. I know, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> but the Corona tools last such a long time. And that's why they cost $130 for a show. $140 for a metal rake. They make some good tools. They really do. Okay? So you all. They are very pricey. We haven't been able to get them yet, but now cobalt is a good one too. But it's hard to find the cobalt. You can, I think they're in loads. Yeah. But it seems like they sell out so fast, and those are like forty dollars, fifty dollars, or something like that. Because we got a metal cobalt rake that we paid like forty-nine bucks for. That thing is the truth. It do the job. We only have one like that the other ones were less expensive they're not as heavy but this one do a good job but you have to get what your money can afford okay all right so now i don't think i'm missing anything else anything else you all 
you got a Pakistan mulberry love notes. I'm so excited about oh, our Pakistan mulberry. That's I'm so excited about getting those mulberries. Yeah. Yes, I'm so excited. Now, tools like made from way back in the day that was made out of iron. You probably still got them tools. <laughs> you ain't broke them at all. <laughs> Not at all. Them ain't gonna be broken. Okay? You bought a pineapple guava? Call you back, baby. Okay, so now those tools you have them a long time. So if you can find them at a garage sale, please. Um, I'm working on the moringa. I'm working on that right now. I really try to make sure we get good seed, right? I purchased seeds from these people before, and they did really, really, really well. I was really impressed. I've even bought uh, cuttings from them that did really, 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 really well, right? So I'm gonna see about that. I'm gonna see. If I can, I'll let y'all know. Your Moringa's not doing good? Okay, so what I did, and I have a video on this from last year, in the 2021 garden playlist about starting Moringa seeds, I did, that was my very first time. I had never done it before. That was my very first time. I soaked the seeds. Some of them, I peeled the skin off, others I didn't. The ones that I peeled the skin off didn't do so good. The ones that I left the skin on, even though I soaked it, did very well. We lost a few to the frost because we got a late freeze. The others that survived, we planted them, and those trees are 15 feet tall right now. So we did really well with that. Okay. are identical. Me and Mr. H's phones are identical. But our buttons are in a different place. They do different. The phone is exactly the same phone, but the buttons, his buttons are different <laughs> from my buttons. Yeah. Now, come on, come on, come on. Maybe your phone don't want to come on. I don't know how to turn it. This is the power button, right? Right here? Yeah. Okay. All right, so now, I'll do my best to get that up. Any other questions? I'm sure I probably missed some at Homestead Heart. Limited garden budget this year. Yes, ma'am, never enough time. Yes, ma'am, you can. A lot of people use coconut courier to start their seeds in. I've never done that before, but I know people do. I know people use the coconut courier, they use peat and perlite, or um, I did a video recently on the cheat sheet for starting seeds. And that's where I just bought some potting mix and sifted it out and used it. And it works excellent. <laughs> it works excellent. I ain't got to buy all them components to put them together because they didn't have the moss that we needed yeah. so I just did that and it worked perfect okay uh, no 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 kumquat seeds let's see what do you think of no dig gardening I think it works if you can if you can do it please do it you know where you put the cardboard and whatnot down to kill the weeds and grass underneath and then you put the compost on top that's excellent I think that's fantastic because the cardboard is going to break down over time okay so I think that's an excellent idea to be able to do that if you can do it I think that's fantastic yes I do okay let's see where I'm at all right y'all are there any Any other questions that I miss? You're very welcome.
welcome. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. How do you keep Moringa plants in the winter in zone seven? You'll have to bring it inside. You have to grow it in a container, keep it cut to about four to five feet and bring it inside. That's gonna be your best bet. Yes, you're gonna have to bring it inside, okay? If you have a garage or you have room in your house with a sunny window, you're gonna have to bring it inside for it to survive. Uh, yes, we have been to the Decap Farmer's Market, but not recently. We haven't been in quite a while, actually. No problem. Okay. Replacing weeds with flowers and beds. That's what I'm talking about. Replacing weeds with flowers in the bed? Mm -hmm. Replacing weeds with vegetables and flowers. Oh yeah, that's great. something once once you learn it you know it forever yep. so don't let your lack of knowledge of something make you feel some type of way just learn it there is so much in this world in the universe that we don't know that you can take what we do know and put it on the head of a pen of a stick pen but once you learn something now you know so just keep going just keep growing just keep trying just keep learning the biggest problem will come when you stop trying don't be disheartened by that. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. That's, that's Keep right. Keep on growing. Keep on growing. Yeah. Keep on growing. All right, y'all. We are in Georgia. We live in Georgia. In the South. <laughs> all right. Is there anything else before we go, you all? I know I didn't miss so much. I know I didn't miss so much. I know I didn't missed a lot. We learn something new every day. Susie B, we've never, uh oh, we've never done meetups. We've been in a pandemic for the last two years. Man. All right. Is there anything else, you all, before we call it a day? We didn't. We on LST time. <laughs> yes, we are. Do you need worm castings if you already use rabbit compost? I'm going to say that's going to be a matter of choice. I'm going to say it's a matter of choice. Because if you use rabbit manure, you know rabbit manure is excellent when it comes to fertilizing your crops. So do you actually need it? Your crops are not doing them to with the rabbit man hurt adding worm castings. Right? With your production with the rabbit manure, then please add some worm castings. It can only make it better. It can't make it worse at all. Um, no, I don't have classes. I try to offer what we know right here at no extra cost to anybody. Just some time. All it costs you is time. I'm working.
working on that cookbook or that book. I'm working on that. Y'all keep saying I'm going to do it. Okay? All right. Let's see. I think that's everybody. What about horse manure? If you buy, if you get some horse manure, you know you need to let that stuff sit for a while before you use it. You do not want that to burn up your crops. You bring your moringa inside. Susie, we didn't bring ours in. It went the whole winter and we still have it where it is because we wanted to see if it was truly dead. And we'll know here in a few months. So we wanted to see if it was truly dead because the tree is still strong. Yeah. The trunk is about this thick, right? So we wanted to see if it was still strong. So we're gonna know here in a few months. Yeah. <laughs> or in a few weeks rather. Yeah. Okay. Asante sign. I don't even know the song though. Alright, y'all. That's gonna do it then. That's gonna do it, y'all. We have truly enjoyed spending this time with y'all today. Yes, we did. Yes, we have. This has been amazing. Yeah. Mr. H and I wanted to come on because oh, y'all, we, we need to see y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, it was a marathon, see? We doing that lead farm stuff. All right, y'all. No, we have not planted any muscadines. I'm not even a muscadine fan. Wild Pine 3 Homestead. Hey. Wild Pine 3. How y'all so doing? So good to see you. I didn't know y'all was in the house. Wild Pine 3. Wild Pine 3 Homestead is in the building. The yeah. chili recipe? Yes. I got to put that chili recipe in a book. That chili is fire. <laughs> got to do that. Yeah. Watching from Missouri. All right, y'all. That's going to do it for this video. Thank y'all so much for joining us today for these lives that we have done. It's been a joy hanging out with y'all. It has. <laughs> it really has. And we truly appreciate it. Thank y'all so much to every one of you for all of the wonderful feedback Thanks. that you all put in the comment section below to help everyone involved. Thank y'all so much. That means so much to us and we truly appreciate y'all. Yeah. We really do. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nikki Snook. Y'all just made our day. Made our day. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for joining us today. Thank y'all for watching Homestead Heart. Thank you, Homestead Jen. We truly appreciate y'all so much. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. Peace and blessings. Yes, yes, y'all. <laughs> yes, yes, y'all. Peace and blessings. Yes, yes, y'all. We're going to see y'all in the next video. Peace.